Hey guys, happy Sunday and welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're enjoying the start of DIY December. This is our second video that's going to be coming out for the start of DIY December. And then we will be jumping into the actual month of December where we will do two videos every week, Thursday and Sunday for all of December. Lots of really fun DIYs coming your way, projects. We have a renovation coming in the new year. So a lot of really exciting projects are going to be coming out during DIY. DIY December. So if you're not already subscribed, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you can see all of these videos and make all of these really fun, beautiful, vintage, moody Christmas decor pieces along with me. Today we are going to have a nice cozy Christmassy day and we're going to do two DIYs that are going to help us to start decorating our home for Christmas and get some really great staple pieces that we can use for many Christmases. And these are pieces that translate through any decor so whether you have the same style as me or you change styles over the years these pieces will translate with you the two DIYs that we're going to be making today are some dried orange garlands and then the second one that we're gonna do is we're gonna make some paper mache bells both of these DIYs give like a very classic natural vintage feel and are super easy and budget-friendly to make each project costs less than five dollars so you really can't get better than that these are super inexpensive they're great great family friendly DIYs if you want to do these over the holiday break with your kids or your loved ones or friends or even just on your own like I'm doing. These are the perfect DIYs to kick off your Christmas decorating season. And we're going to start with our dried orange garlands. So making dried oranges is very simple but it does take a little bit of time but it's something that you can prep put in the oven to, to dry out and dehydrate and go about your day and do other things. You just need to have the time where you can be home while they're in the oven. For our dried oranges, you're gonna need a bag of oranges, just like I have here. I got this entire bag for just a couple of bucks. You could also use grapefruit, lemons, limes, any kind of citrus fruit, and they'll dry exactly the same. They'll just give you a different look, so it'll help if you wanna diversify the look of your garland. These are super beautiful to put like on a mantle or around a window or on your Christmas tree but also to put as decorations on gifts that you're giving. Okay so I have my first orange here and what you're going to want to do is cut off the ends to your orange. We don't want those, we don't want this little piece right here. So we'll set those off to the side and we're gonna cut our orange slices in really, really thin slices. You wanna get this cross section here in each of your pieces so that it gives like a really pretty look to your garland. So we're gonna try and do them in like really thin quarter inch slices and try to cut straight so that they're even. So something about like this. Okay, and so we are going to just keep cutting at that width until this entire orange is gone. So I have all of my orange slices laid out. I still have quite a few oranges left over, so I'm probably gonna do a second baking sheet to put in the oven with these. So all of this was just two oranges. So it makes quite a lot, and so you'll be able to use these for a lot of different things in your home. I have my oven set to 190 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're gonna put these in the oven for about two hours, maybe a little bit longer, depending on your oven. And after an hour at halfway in, we're gonna flip all of them so that they dehydrate evenly. And then when we go to take them out at the end of the two hours, you just want to check and make sure that, you know, there's no more juice in them and that they're kind of like rubbery feeling. If they still feel squishy and kind of wet, you want to leave them in a little bit longer. And that rubbery feeling is exactly what you want because then we will let these sit the rest of the day until the evening or overnight so that any last little bits of moisture can dry out and then they'll be ready to work with. All 
right, so our oranges are all dried and ready to go. So we're going to start to make our garland, and I'm also going to show you guys how to prep some for putting them on gifts if you want to. I'm using some twine to make the garland. It's the same twine that we've used in the past, and you can tell from the color that these lost their moisture and they're nice and dehydrated. So they'll continue to dry a little bit more over like the next day or so. So I'm going to take my twine and just stick it through the back so that it goes from one side to the next and we're gonna make our garland like that. So because my twine is a little bit thicker, I have to get kind of creative with how I'm going to feed it through. So if there's a hole that already exists like this one, then I'll use that. If there isn't, like on this side, there's no hole. What I'm gonna do is take my needle and poke a hole and just kind of wiggle it around until there's a little bit of a gap and then take my twine and use my needle to kind of just press it through the hole like that and then slide it up so that they're next to each other. And we're just going to continue to do this for the length of garland that we want for whatever space you're going to be hanging it for. easy way to do a pretty gift bow sort of thing with your dried orange peels is to do that same method that we did for our garland where you poke your twine through like this and then take something like a cinnamon stick or some dried florals and slide that through your twine like this and then pull it tight and we'll tie it on the back like that. And then this is a really cute way to put this on gifts or on your card or Christmas gifts that you're giving out. So I'm going to do this and do some with some dried florals and some with cinnamon and kind of mix and match for my gifts this year. The next thing that we're going to be making is some paper mache bells. To do this, I got everything that we're going to be using at the dollar store. So this was a very inexpensive DIY. It cost me $5 to make six bells. What we're going to need is some little like wine glass, plastic wine glass type cups from the dollar store. Um, I got this little set and they come in a pack of six. And what we're going to be doing is cutting this end stem off of our glass. I did that for this one. It does crack. So it looks like this. So it is cracked, but that's totally fine because we're going to use this as a mold for our paper mache. And we're going to be putting paper mache over the cup, so you'll never see the cup anyways. You can either remove the cup or leave it in for extra structure. For however many bells you're going to be doing, you want to remove these little stems from them with like scissors or a knife or something like that. You're also going to need a mixing bowl, some flour, Elmer's glue, and then the joining compound that we're going to use is going to be toilet paper and that will be what makes the clay when we mix it all together. It's going to be kind of like our paper in the paper mache. The last couple things we're going to need is some kind of little wooden dowel situation. Um, I have these from when we made our transitional centerpiece a couple weeks ago and this came in the basswood set. So these are just like thick wooden dowels and I'm going to cut them in half and use these in our bells. Three of these will make six bells. And then each of our bells is going to be hanging from a leather strap. Instead of going and ordering a leather strap, which can be like 15, 20 bucks, and then you have to cut it down to strap sizes. What I did is I went to the dollar store and I found this little set of like fashion sunglasses with a little leather case. It's fake leather, of course, but it totally works. And so this is exactly what we're looking for, for our leather strap. So I'm going to use just this glass 
glasses case to make our leather strap later on and we'll be able to just cut it in strips and it'll look exactly the same but cost a fraction of the price. So these are all the materials that we're going to need to make our bells. The first thing we want to do, we want to get our paper mache made and get our bells molded so that these can sit overnight and really solidify and then we can add our strap and wooden dowels in the morning. We are going to cut all of the ends off of our glasses. We're going to mix up our paper mache mixture. So I went ahead and took two toilet paper rolls and I poured some hot water over them until I was able to just pull the center cardboard piece out and then I rang out all the water that I could get. We're going to start with two toilet paper rolls and then if we need to add our other two that we have we can do that later on. But for now what we want to do is just start pulling these apart into really tiny pieces as best you can so that we're able to make our mixture. Literally just tearing them into little shreds. You could also use like a handheld blender if you have that and that would work too. Okay, so we have our toilet paper all shredded up. So the next thing we're gonna do is add in our flour and our glue to start mixing up our paper mache mixture. I have some regular old flour right here and I'm gonna add two cups of flour to our mixture because I have two rolls of toilet paper in here. If you're just doing one roll, of toilet paper then only add one cup of flour so this recipe is doubled we have our flour in and now we're going to add some Elmer's glue this is just dollar store brand glue so I'm gonna add one and a half cups of this to my mixture if you're only doing one roll of toilet paper then you would add three quarters of a cup alright so for reference a bottle this size which is eight fluid ounces is one cup of glue so luckily I do have another one of these on hand Alright, so this is my backup one. So we'll add a half a cup to finish off our one and a half cups of Elmer's glue. So we now have our paper mache all mixed up. Because it has flour and glue in it, it's super, super sticky, but it has kind of like a doughy consistency to it. You can see how sticky it is by my fingers. We're gonna take a paper plate or parchment paper or whatever you wanna work with. We're gonna start to mold our paper mache around our bells. The trick with this is to start by taking little sections of your paper mache you don't want to take too much at a time because it is so sticky and you want to try and make it thick enough that it's going to be sturdy but thin enough that it's not going to take days and days and days to dry so you might have to pull apart some of your pieces of your mixture and start to kind of mold it onto your plastic what I kind of do is I place the piece that I'm working with down and then as best I can I try to blend it to the pieces next to it so sometimes it works a little bit better than other times, but this helps it to kind of join together really well. You want to leave the hole from where our stem was in the center left open because that's where our leather strap is going to go in as well as our wooden dowel to finish it off. Okay, so I put on a plastic glove just because I find that it sticks to me slightly less when I do this, which makes it a little bit easier to work with. So I'm kind of just rough applying it. I don't really mind if it looks kind of lumpy because I want the bells to have a rustic look to them and we can always sand it down a little bit after it dries. The main goal right now is just to kind of get a good layer on that can sit out to dry and then we can clean it up and make it look pretty after the fact if we need to. want to take our paper mache all the way down to the edge of the plastic cup so that you can't see it. So we'll just keep going like this until we have all of our bells covered with paper mache. Once I've applied all of my paper mache to my plastic cup and made my bell shape, the last thing that I want to do is add just like a light layer of joint compound over the top. And this step is totally optional. It's not necessary at all, but I like it because it kind of smooths out my layers and it gives it a little bit more stability. I'm going to add just like a light layer over it um, because I already had joint compound on hand, but if you don't and you're not you know, worried about the texture at all and you want to just kind of sand it down, then you can skip this step. Okay, so we have all six of our Bell's paper mache and we're going to set these off to the side to dry overnight. So in the morning, we're going to just kind of add our wooden dowel and our leather strap and they'll be ready to decorate with and we'll hang them with some ribbon. And I'm thinking that I'll probably hang them on 
our mantle at some point. I'm going to put like a garland and some things like that on the mantle. So I think these would be nice on either side of that. But for now, I might use them as doorknob decor or maybe on the front of our fireplace, something like that, until we get the garland and everything up. So we'll let these dry overnight and then tomorrow we can add our leather strap and our wooden dowel and decorate with them. So in the meantime, I want to get those other two items ready to go so that tomorrow we can just glue them on and decorate. For our wooden dowel, these are going to be hanging out the bottom of our bells. So we're going to cut these in half. And for these basswood ones, they're pretty easy to cut in half. So all that I'm going to do is start it on one side like that, flip it over, do the same thing on the other side, and then snap it. And that gives us two right there. So we'll do that for three of them to have enough for all six. There we go. So as easy as that, now we have six wooden dolls that we can use in our bells tomorrow. And then the only other thing we need to do is to cut our leather strips so that these are also ready for tomorrow. For this particular leather, it's attached on the top and the bottom, which is perfect. That's what we wanted anyways. So we're just going to cut six strips that are relatively the same in size. Literally, I'm just going to go like this. And that gives us a little leather strap that we can hang at the top of our bell. So we need six of those because I have six bells, so we'll just cut six more. Alright, so we are going to finish up making our bells today. So I have a couple of them done so that we can, you know, know what we need to do and any issues that are going to come up so that I can show you guys. But this is what they're going to look like in the end result. So we have our leather poles up here to hang them from and our little wooden dowels to act kind of like our bell piece. There's two ways that you can do these bells. If you have a hole at the top of your bell that is a little bit larger that you're worried about, maybe your leather pole or your wooden piece pulling through the hole, then a good way to fix that is by using like a little washer like this, a metal washer. Um, and these were just ones that I had sitting in my garage already. So I tried that on this one to see how much more secure it would be. And really, I think that if your hole is not too large, you don't need the washer. But if you accidentally made a hole that's bigger than you were expecting, then I would say maybe try the washer. But this one I did without it, and I think it's equally strong and really they're just decorative they're going to be hanging like on your door or your mantle or wherever it is that you want to put them so they're not going to be moved around a lot we are going to go ahead and make one of our bells so that i can walk you guys through it i have our wooden pieces and our leather poles that we made you just need one of each for your bell so what i'm doing is i'm opening up the leather pole and i'm sliding the twine through it like this so that the wooden piece can hang from the pole inside so taking your twine and just placing it in the hot glue like this so that it adheres to your wooden dowel and then just let it dry before you move on to your other side. When you go to do your other side, you just want to leave a little bit of slack in the leather pole so that it's not too tight and it makes it go sideways. You want it to be able to sit upright like this and then glue the leftover twine that you have down on the other side. So we'll do the same thing. We'll just run some hot glue up and down our dowel, place your twine into your hot glue like this, and I kind of just press it on both edges so that it can attach firmly to the dowel and the glue. And what I do as it's drying is I just kind of go zigzagging over it with glue just to give it like an extra layer to really make sure it's holding on tight and any edges like this I just kind of glue down right just like that so once it's all dry you're gonna take your leather pull and pinch it so that it folds in half like this and what you want to do is you want to slide your pull inside of your bell and feed it through the little hole on the inside to come out the top so feed it through just like that and then you're gonna pull your leather pull so that it's mostly out but you still have a little bit 
inside to kind of secure it on both ends. Once you have it like this, there's just one more step to go and that's gonna be hot gluing your leather pole into place. What I do is I really just kind of coat the inside area with hot glue to secure the leather pole there. And then I feed th some of the hot glue through the top as well. So I'm just gonna put some hot glue in and just be careful that it doesn't pour through and get your fingers or anything like that. You don't wanna burn yourself. Okay, and we'll let that inside layer dry. I just kind of lined it like this. And then when it's most mostly dry on the inside or completely dry, what you're going to do is you're going to take this top bit right here and just add some hot glue to kind of really seal in your leather pole as best you can and make it as secure as possible. And if you find that you like accidentally put too much hot glue and it's showing, you could always add like a little faux floral or dried floral to the top to kind of conceal that. So then you just let it dry and that is all that you need to do for your bells. So we'll do this to all six of them and then we'll be able to run our ribbon through and hang them up for decoration. So the very last thing that we need to do is to put some ribbon on our bells so we can hang them and decorate with them. So I am going to be using this ribbon that I got for fall time for a wreath that I was doing and it came in a very large wheel and so I wanted to use some more of this because I already had it and I also think that it would go really well with the orange garland that we just made because the bells are going to be on the mantle next to the orange garland. I think this is the perfect complement to the garland. It also has like a really beautiful Christmassy velvet look and our mantle is a dark green color so I think this would be a really nice contrast to that color. I want to hang the bells in groups of three. I think that that will look best as a pairing. You can hang them in any arrangement number that you want to do. You could do pairs or singles or put them all together but for me personally I kind of like to go with the interior design rule that you know you group things in sets of three and that's supposed to be most pleasing to the eye. So that's kind of how I decorate when I'm not sure what to do or if something's not looking quite right, I kind of fall back on that interior design rule. So I'm gonna be putting them in groups of three. I'm gonna have them kind of staggered in height. So I'm gonna cut an initial piece and then do one that is shorter and longer so that we can group these together. Okay, so I have all of my ribbons cut for both sets of bells. What I'm thinking I'm gonna do is run my ribbons through each of the leather poles and then just tie them off in a little knot and then I'll be able to take the longest one that we cut and run that through all three of the bells and tie it in like a pretty little bow and hang it from that. That way you don't have like three ribbons hanging from something on your door or your mantle and it'll just kind of streamline it and make it look a little bit neater. That is what I'm gonna try and we'll see how it looks. That way you know if this is a good idea or not. Obviously you will have a little bit of a knot at the top of your ribbon for each piece, but I think that that will look a lot neater than having three from the nail or the hook or whatever it is that you're gonna use. So kind of like this, and then we'll run one ribbon through all three like that. Okay, so we have our three bells tied off, and so now what we're gonna do is take our long ribbon and run it through all three. So I'm literally just going to feed it through and then we can position them once they're hanging. And another option if you don't want it to have, you know, these three ribbons right here is you could just run your three bows onto the one ribbon and just do it like that. This just gives me a little bit of height differentiation. So I think what I'm gonna do is just mimic the knot like on the other ones because it's actually looking really pretty and that way we don't have to lose any more of our height to tying off a bow. So just doing it like this and then we can just put it on like a little nail or a hook or whatever it is that you have. So we'll do the same exact thing for the other three and then we'll decorate with them.
All right, so that wraps up our video for this week. I hope that you guys had a nice cozy start to your holiday decorating coming off of the Thanksgiving week. I think that this is such a fun DIY to start off the Christmas season and decorating for the holidays. These two DIYs are super simple and budget friendly, and I think they work really, really well with anyone's style and decor and situation in their home. For these DIYs, if you have very elaborate Christmas decorations in your home, I think that this is a great way to kind of mix it up and bring something new into the equation without adding too much to your space. And I also think that these are really beautiful pieces for someone that has not very many decorations in their home and wants to keep it simple, but just add something fresh and new. These are the perfect way to start off your holiday season, and I hope that you give them a try yourself. If you do, please let me know. I'd love to hear how our projects turn out for you all as well. And if you're enjoying making DIYs with me, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can see more videos like this every week. We are in the start of DIY December. So for all of December, we're going to have two videos a week. So there's going to be lots of new DIYs and projects for you all to make during the holiday season. We have tons and tons of really beautiful holiday decor pieces that we're going to be doing. We're going to decorate my home for Christmas. In the new year, we have a room renovation coming out that I'm super excited to show you all. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any of it. We will have videos coming out every Thursday and Sunday. Sunday for all of December. I hope that you all are enjoying DIY December as much as I am and I'm really looking forward to showing you all the amazing things that we're going to be making. So I will see you all on Thursday. Mm -hmm.